Serious. What's a secret you will take to the grave but don't mind telling on the internet? Please consider subscribing if you enjoy the video. Only I know that my mother-in-law killed her dog by sitting on it. My father burned down my childhood home for the insurance money. He took me along as his alibi, so I could verify he wasn't anywhere near it when it happened. I was 13 years old. I remember crying so hard knowing my clothes, books, photos, all of it would be destroyed. I wasn't allowed to save anything because he told me it would have been too suspicious. I found out years later he blamed it on me, telling the fire chief, plus friends and family the fire had started because I must have been secretly smoking in my bedroom. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I attempted to murder my mother. She was abusive, verbally but also physically. She'd hit you in places no one would see, or rip clumps of my hair out when dad was on the road for work. She probably has a personality disorder. She got in my face one night when I was coming home from my second job, and I had it. My mom like went through whole periods where she wouldn't work. I was killing myself every summer working 50 plus hours to pay family bills in my parents' names and also get my younger sister to all of her activities. I had IT. I tried to put mom's head through a wall. She started screaming, oh, help, help, and I told her she could dish it out. She should also be able to take it. Shoved her on the ground and kicked her repeatedly in the abdomen and thigh, while still trying to put her head through the wall with one hand. It's a plaster and laugh situation old house in New England. I really fricked her up, and it felt good to do so. She's destroyed so many people's lives and she never faces any consequences for it. No one in our family ever helped me or called the police when she would abuse me. The only one who ever helped was the dog. If the dog was awake when my mom tried to start something she'd get between us. Growl at mom until she backed down. I had always shown restraint and never hit her until this night, but my dad did call the cops on me when I crossed that line. The cops get there. Split us up to interview. I explained my side and then just blurt out. Where were you assholes when I was eight and she was doing that to me? The cop was taken aback. I think he could tell I was being honest and it was a culmination of years of shit and pain. He goes and talks to his partner. I think this isn't an assault. I think it's a mental illness thing. Then they basically intimidated my mom and dad into agreeing with them. They wouldn't let it go until they agreed it was a medical issue not a criminal one. So they called an ambulance and I went to the hospital as part of a diversion program. Basically, they sent me to detox for three days and I emerged with no record. No charges. No nothing except a script for Prozac and a recommendation for therapy, paid for by the state low income insurance plan. Trying to kill my mom probably saved my life, honestly, because I got myself some tools from a CBT slash DBT therapist, but I'm not stupid enough to want people to know. Who would date me? How would I ever get promoted at work? Anyway, be kind. You never know what someone's been through and you never know what people are capable of when pushed far enough. I had a sweet, wonderful student who had been in foster care but his mom worked her ass off to get him back and she did. He had to take a very important city exam and she called me and asked if he passed it. I looked at the grades and saw he did and said so. She burst into tears of joy and that is when I saw I had read the wrong score. He had failed. So I changed his grade to passing. No one knew. That was the only time I ever did that. That could have cost me my license. The weird thing is, when my awful corrupt principal pressured me to change other students' scores so we could raise our pass rate, I refused. I never told anyone what I did for my student. He went into the military, was extremely successful there, has a great wife and kids. So I think I did the right thing. Frick those tests. They aren't human. Mentioned before, will never tell anyone I had one of those expensive fancy life-size sex dolls. Got rid of it at first opportunity after getting a real partner. But it's literally the only secret I have that I'm not willing to say to anyone in real life. Speaking of grave, when I was a teenager some friends and I got really stoned and walked around the town cemetery. There was a whole section of generic flat grave markers from the 1800s. I found myself trying to imagine their lives in the same town I lived so long ago. Then I saw one plate kind of sticking up and crooked and I bent down to touch it. It wasn't attached at all, and I lifted it up in my hand. Right then, my asinine stone teenage brain decided to put it in my backpack. I thought I'd somehow honor this stranger more than the shitty groundskeeper leaving it all willy-nilly in the middle of the aisle. None of my friends saw what I did. Q hours later, sober, and the guilt and panic are setting in. I hid the plate in my closet for about a year before I chucked it back over the fence one day late at night. I hope Bessie Jane Holmes doesn't mind that I kept her for a while. I still think back and shudder at the guilt of such a moral frickery. I used to work for the airport and so got very discounted fares for friends and family. My mom was going on a trip with her friend to Key West and they were gonna drive since flying was too expensive. I talked her into letting me handle the flying arrangements and they'd save a ton. 
A typical $500 plus flight turned into like $250 for both of them combined. Well, I was still kinda new at booking reservations and whatnot. And I ended up screwing up the reservation, I think I only booked it for one way or something. So the night before their flight, I rebooked it, and paid the $450 for the both of them. Money I really didn't have, and have since never told my mom. It was for Mother's Day, so I figured that was my gift to her, it's been nearly 10 years since. I sharted on a New Year's party bus a few years ago. I thought it was just a fart but it was a small shotgun blast of fluid. I stayed calm, and threw away my undies at the next bar. Luckily there was little or no shit on the inside of my jeans and I was able to continue the night with no one aware of my poop crime. When I was a kid I used to shit in a tire in the garden because I was scared of getting locked in the toilet. That my dad paid my mom $1,500 for full custody of my youngest sibling. Not only would this be a massive blow to my sibling but my dad remarried quite quickly and the new wife is the very definition of an evil stepmom. If my sibling knew that her mom gave her up for such a small sum of money and the trade-off was 5 plus years of abuse she would be destroyed. I agreed to a first date with someone to make him stop crying. Six years later we're happily engaged and doing great. I don't know how well he remembers that, but I'm not bringing it up. As a teenager, I had cancer multiple times and nearly died a lot. At one point, I spent several weeks in intensive care and survived despite no doctor thinking that I possibly could live. More than 20 years later, Everyone I know still comments on how I survived purely on will to live. I actually spent every moment in that hospital bed in absolute agony, desperately wanting to die. So my grandfather had a hand in making one of the World Series trophies back in the day. He never got any credit, but we have photos and parts from his prototype. When I was a teen I added what I knew to Wikipedia since why not, although I believe it's gone now. But funny story I ended but being counted in newspapers all over the country. Proceed to a few years later I get a call from my mom who's almost in tears. Of joy. She found that wiki page and was freaking out. She was so happy he finally got credit. She ended up making really fancy shadow boxes of the wiki page printed out. Copies of the photos and other baseball stuff. She made one for each of her siblings. I've had to just bite my tongue every time I go over there and see this thing hanging prominently in the living room. Me and my cousin took turns licking each other's assholes when we were about 10 years old. I have vivid memory of it. We have never spoken of it since. We're both 25 yo men now. My mother is cheating on my father and my father is cheating on my mother. They both know I know this but made me promise not to tell the other parent. Parents are fricked up sometimes. My dad cheated on my mom and invited the person over when I was 9. She was a severely overweight woman and my dad is also quite overweight. My parents were fighting but trying to work things out. They slept in separate rooms at this point. Earlier that day I had jumped on his bed and broke the board supporting it on the bed frame. I wasn't allowed to do this and always got in trouble for this reason. My mom smelled the fact that my dad had company because she smoked in my house. She asked if I jumped on the bed. I said no. I feared I'd get in trouble. I was surprised there was no follow-up trying to prove my guilt. Years later I remember why she asked and realized my lie basically incriminated him to freaking her. I'm sure he did but that got him kicked out of my house. I'm a guy. When I was around 9-10 I had a friend, also guy, who pushed me up against the wall and started jacking me off. He started doing this frequently and made me masturbate in front of him with one of my parents' personal massagers. I tried to tell on him one time but went back on it really quickly. I think my mom knew what was going on though. Felt a bit like Stockholm because he was one of my only friends back then and I was really scared and confused. Then another friend started dry humping me at a sleepover one time. Being sexualized so early on in life really freaked me up. My first car accident back in high school was not because I swerved to miss a deer like I told my dad and the police. I actually tried to pull the emergency brake and do a 180 while going 50 miles per hour downhill. Had I gone off the other side of the road I would have gone down a 50 foot hill and into the river. That was the last time I ever tried anything like that. There just so happened to be deer tracks in the mud near the ditch where I ended up. I avoided a ticket and my dad paid to fix my car. I have never told him the truth in the 15 plus years since. I was raped with an implement in the youth room of my childhood church by my two best friends at the time. We were basically alone in the building at the time. One did it, and the other held me down. They thought it was a joke slash funny. Even once I started screaming, one of them had a moment of clarity and I suppose realized that what they were doing was wrong, and made the other person stop, and they sat there with me for a few minutes until I'd calmed down. Once I regained myself enough to stand, I racked one of them between the legs with a pool cue. Their parents were waiting in the parking lot and they were going to call the cops on me until my friend confessed what they'd done to their parents. I was pressured into silence by the pastor at the parents' behest. 
I've told people, so I guess it's not technically a secret, but nobody's believed me because I'm a big guy, and always have been. The last person I tried to talk to about it actually smacked me in the face. So I guess I'll be dying with this one. My father-in-law died of a heart attack at a strip club. The cop told my wife and mother-in-law that it was a bar. They assumed it was a sports bar. My brother-in-law and I had to pick up the car from said strip club. We both pledged to never tell the rest of the family. My brother-in-law didn't have a driver's license. I was only there as the person who could drive the car back to their home. He was ultimately responsible for death certificates, probate or any other legal proceedings after. It's not my freaking business whether or not I should have told his mother and sister anything about how he his father died. However, my mother-in-law is super religious and it would have just made her sad. I grew up without my dad and I went to meet him this summer for the first time ever. I realized he loves me but no enough to ever come visit me. Admitting that that makes me sick to my stomach and sad as frick is something I just can't do to anyone. Neither to him. Once when I was 13 I went a week and a half without pooping. I was on a camping trip and something must have happened with the drinking water slash my digestion. Took laxatives. Nothing worked. My stomach was killing me but nothing would come out. Then one evening after dinner. I felt it coming. I knew this was it. I bolted for the bathhouse, mentally preparing for the epic event. When I finally waddled in the stalls where ALL occupied, at this point I'm freaking out. I'm literally going to shit my pants and in the woods with no means of cleaning. I waddle to the private shower attached to the bathrooms and my desperate mind starts solving problems like I'm Bradley Cooper in Limitless. Initially I think to just shit on the shower drain and waffle stomp it through. But I was not going to be that guy who ruined the nicest shower in the woods for everyone. Like a bolt of lightning I knew what I had to do. So I pooped in the only piece of clothing I could spare. My sock. Obviously my stomach was doing better now and I was hugely relieved. I brought the poop sock to the dumpster nearby and one of my friends saw me on the way. Before I could dispose of the poop sock he strikes up a conversation and starts asking questions about what I'm doing. Internally I'm panicking. The best excuse I could come up with was that I found a sock in the shower stuffed with mud so I thought it best to throw it away. My friend affirms how good of a guy I am for doing that. I throw the poop sock into the dumpster and my problems are finally over. Mud in a sock is a ridiculous story but there's absolutely no way he could have guessed that the real situation was much, much more bizarre. I've never told a soul about this until now, never will again. A girl I knew for three years told me she gets raped by her half-brother every week. She doesn't like it and doesn't want to tell her mom. Since her mom has been married six times and she says that she is very happy with her current husband, she doesn't want to ruin her mom's relationship. So she just keeps going on with it against her will. She sweared on her life that I'm the only one who knows about this. And she begs me not to tell anyone. And the problem is that if I want to and if it gets exposed, she will immediately know it's me. My sister molested me when I was really young. Still not over it. Still live with her. I don't even know if she even remembers it. For reference, she is 6 years older than me. And she definitely knew what she was doing at the time. I didn't. But I was willing to do it. When I was like 4 we played electric chair truth or dare and she made me do stuff. I still remember what I did, but I would rather not recount that here. I have thought about killing myself every day for nearly a year now. Haven't told a soul. Not sure if I will actually do it or not which is what scares me. My depression and anxiety and stress has gotten so bad I can barely leave the house. I regret having kids. I'm not cut out for motherhood and there is not a maternal bone in my body. Thanks for the gold. Weird comment to receive one, but I appreciate it. Maybe it's PPD or just this stage of life but I will seek therapy. I love my kids and I will never say anything or hint about my feelings. It's not their fault. My mom is in a relationship with her somewhat distant cousin. Yes we call him Shio, Spanish for uncle. Yes he lives with us. No we are not from the south. And yes I find it disgusting. I have done everything I can to hide it from people I know. It is extremely embarrassing. Fortunately my mom and dad are not related. Please subscribe if you liked the video. It really helps the channel to grow. See you again.